Watch out for the carpet here. The edge of it. Don't get your toe caught under the edge. I told you about I mean. I won't. Uh, I've been walking the boots since I was born, practically. You're from where? Nebraska? Uh, no. Uh, Oklahoma. Um, uh, Big Eagle, Oklahoma, outside Tulsa. You get blackouts and big angle? Electrical blackouts like this? Uh, Big Eagle? No. Not really. Uh, not too many lights to begin with, not Big Eagle. Tulsa's a big town, though. You ever been there? No, sir. Farthest west I've been is Jersey City. That's in New Jersey, just across the Hudson River. Uh, do you mind uh, opening the door for me uh, with this uh, lantern and bag of food stuff to get the key? There you are, sir. Sweetheart. You in here somewhere? Got us some Chinese food. Good Chinese food. The best. Love one's the best around here. And New York has got the best Chinese food in the world. Even better than in China. At least that's what our Chinese guests tell me. I was never actually in China myself, but I guess the Chinese should know. I'm sure they'll have the lights fixed soon. The candles should last until they do. There are more candles in the desk there beside the window if you need them. Well, the phones are working. At least they were a few minutes ago. <laughs> if you need anything else, please just call down, ask for Sean. I'd recommend though that you stay in the room until the power comes on again. New York is not Oklahoma, you know. <laughs> there are plenty of people who take advantage of a situation like this one. You know what I'm talking about. Thanks. We'll be all right. Uh, do you mind if I keep this uh, lantern? Uh, bird, I mean? Well, sure, no problem. Listen, they'll have this fixed before you finish your dinner. Well, uh, come back and get the lantern you need it or anyone else does. We got plenty. Don't worry. Enjoy your dinner, folks. It's like being inside a Christmas tree, isn't it? Like sitting on one of the branches, surrounded by ornaments. City of Lions. And there ain't none. Huh. Oh, maybe that's Paris, the City of Lions. Well, Broadway anyway. The Great White Way. Only well, now it's black. Where's that London that has the Great White Way? Well, let me tell you, sweetheart, when I was out getting the Chinese, people were. 
run home, they were, they were bumping into one another. It was a lucky thing that I got into the Chinese restaurant when I did, too, because as soon as the lights quit, those guys ran the front door and they locked it. Them Chinese fellows weren't taking no chances. They were real polite to me, though. They apologized for taking a little longer than they said it was ordinary for my order. Didn't charge me no tax. At least I said they would. The man went to the front door, unlocked it, and let me out. He said, be careful. Hurry. Be careful. Danny. We're not in China. No, honey. New York. We're in New York. Why did you speak Chinese to that man? What man? The doctor that was here before. That was the bellboy. We're seeing the doctor tomorrow. Remember. And you know I can't speak Chinese. Barely get by an American. Don't be so modest. You know Spanish, too? Yeah. Just about 25 words, maybe like uh, huevos rancheros and uh, buena suerte. Si todo sigue igual. What's that? What's that mean? All things being equal. It's an expression. You know what an expression is, Danny. Don't try to fool me. Well, I, the last thing I try to do is fool you, sweetheart. You know that I, I care more for you than anything in the world. There's fooling around, and then there's trying to fool. Fooling around's what we always done best, I don't you think? You still like to fool around with your old daddy, don't you? <laughs> Even after all these years. It has been a long time. Hasn't it, Danny? Almost 17 years. Lord, it's warm. It's warm. in the dark. But 
I could sure use some air cool. Could we be on Lake Osage? We're back home. Good night. Wouldn't you like that, darling? We're back home. Lying in the canoe. Looking up at the stars. Lake Osage. Is it a Chinese doctor? The one I'm seeing tomorrow. He's Chinese. This Chinese. Only thing is Chinese is this food that's waiting for us to eat here in this bag. The doctor's name is Smith. Herschel Smith. He's a specialist, honey. He'll know what to do. The clinic in Tulsa said Dr. Smith is the best that there is. He's expecting us tomorrow. You were away. When, honey, when was I away? I'm not sure. You were, though. Away in the sea of red. Red Sea, you mean, when I was in the Navy. Oh, of course. When you said Lake Osage, I thought of it. I took a walk, and everything was just like this. There were lights on in the dark, just small ones, little shimmering lights. Oh, lights on in the houses around the lake, you mean? I saw you on the other side. And I shouted, Daddy! Daddy! But it wasn't you. It wasn't you. Hold my fortune. Are you sure this was at Lake Osage? It jumped straight up out of the black water and spoke to me. You never told me this before, honey. I 
just thought you'd think I was crazier than I already am. I don't think you're crazy. I don't know what to call it, but it's not crazy. Maybe Dr. Smith has a name for it. A fish by any other name is still a fish. Even if it's Chinese? Definitely, if it's Chinese. Well, so what does fish tell you? About the children. What about them? All about them. Their names, their hair color, the shapes of their noses. What children die at? Ours. Yours and mine, Danny. All of them. How many? Six. Six altogether. Do you really want to know? Honey, I got no place to go. Not without you, anyway. Danny, you were always the sweetest child. You were one of them. One of who? The six children. You were first, the largest, with red hair and blue eyes. The rest were girls, five perfect girls. Each one of them had brown hair and brown eyes and brown skin. They looked like fawns. Daddy, these are our children. Don't you recognize them? I love you, Di. I, I, I've loved you since I was five and you were three. 17 years, and I love you more than ever. I know, Dan. did have a child. Daddy Junior. Damn, bud. That's right. Dad. Dan Buck. Call him Dan Buck. You remember what happened to Dan Buck? Not really. She do. Come on. He was two. Two years old. How old is he now? Two. Can't get any older. Might have gone in the Navy, Danny. Like you did. Might have. I wouldn't have wanted him to go sailing in the Sea of Red. Sailors don't come back from there sometimes. I came back. I'm here. Damn bugs, Bob. Dan Bug's gone, baby. He drowned in the sea of red. He 
eaten and drowned in Lake Osage. Sentence died. The five fawns are fine. That Chinese fish was sure right about them. I'm sure he ain't half wrong most of the time. It hasn't been that long. No. I know this isn't China, Danny. But I, I think I'd like to go sometime. Well, that's not impossible. You ready to eat? Yeah. Remember Rinky Dink, Dan? What happened to him? Yeah, I, I do. Woman who was driving never looked in her side view, she said. Mm -hmm. Just the rear view mirror. Knocked him sideways off his motor bicycle into the road, right in the path of oncoming traffic. Patrolman said, Rinky Dink's head hit the ground just an instant before that Buick run over his back. <laughs> he was an okay boy. Okay. He had a three inch scar that ran across his forehead that filled with red whenever he laughed or was angry. Remember? The car that crushed him didn't leave a mark. There was only a light bruise on his forehead that would never heal. When Bonnie saw him in the coffin, she said, why, he looks cuter now than ever. Yeah. When uh, I got out of the Navy for uh, came back to Oklahoma, I went and visited a guy I'd met in boot camp. We'd kept a correspondence going. He was living in the foothills of the Sangre de Cristo range of mountains. His name was Famine McCoy. He reminded me of Rinky Dink. Or Rinky Dink reminded me of him. I forget which. Anyway, we were uh, riding out uh, on some back road in this truck, and uh, we got stuck in a rut. And we looked around for some timber uh, to get some traction, and all we found was this stiff, dead dog on the other side of the road. So we, we, uh, shoved it under the wheel, and we rocked right out of there. When we got back to the town, um, Bamman said to this feller that he knew how he'd felt real guilty about uh, abusing that dead dog's body and all. And the guy said, don't worry about it. That's what the dog's body's there for. People use it all the time. Oh, uh, what, what kind of a name is that? Bamman? I asked him about that. His real name was Dave, I think. He got real famous for uh, showing up at people's doorsteps in his neighborhood before he went off to the Navy. He'd go out every evening with his nose up, sniffing, just like a dog casing garbage cans. He'd prowl around the neighborhood, and he'd smell for who was cooking what. 
And then, because he knew everybody in the neighborhood, he could figure out just what it was that he was going to eat that evening. And knock on people's doors, and he'd act like he was just visiting, and then he'd just don't mind if I do his way into a free meal. So it was his neighbors that nicknamed him Famine. But uh, we kept a correspondence going for a couple of years after that. For a while. And he wrote me that he lost an eye in some work-related accident. And he moved down to Florida, got himself a wife, a kid, and then she wrote me that he had died. And it seems that he was out in the Palmettos and he felt this sharp jab and he looked around to see what had happened, but uh, he couldn't find anything. So he, uh, he forgot about it. He went home and that night he started feeling real strange. And he, he acted sick. So his wife took him to the hospital they couldn't find anything wrong with him. They left him to go home, and two hours later, he was dead. Uh, it seems a snake bit him, and if they had just known about that jab, if he told them what it was, they could have saved him, but he didn't tell them. It didn't occur to Fam until just a little while before he faded away that it wasn't just a palmetto leaf that had stuck him. Poor famine. It makes me hungry sometimes to think about it. My mother closed the bedroom door. What door? My door! That's what it sounded like when she closed it. I'd never allow her to put damn bug to bed. I didn't want him to get frightened that way. Dan Bug could sleep through anything. He used to like to watch the lightning with me. The double bolt, the ground lightning like we get in Oklahoma.
I am not drunk, Dan. I haven't had one drink since you've been away. Not one. It was Bonnie who made me, wanted me to go out. But I just watched them. I had cranberry juice and soda water, that's all. We were at the Cherokee, and there was a good band there. Played a lot of old stuff. Made me cry, because you were away. I was sitting on the toilet after I peed, crying because I missed you. And Bonnie was in there with Rinky Dink drinking. Now, they offered me some, but you know me and drinks is not on friendly terms, so I declined. All it took was that woman's small miscalculation, and Rink was dust. I wasn't anywhere tied. I wasn't away. Oh, yes, you were. You were, too. You were off sail in the Sea of Red. Do you know how it hurts your eyes to stare at the horizon? If you stare at the horizon long enough, all you can see is fire. The entire line of the horizon is burning fires as far as the eyes can see. Stop pretending, Di. I am here. I wasn't anywhere. I am here. <laughs> Danny. Danny, can you keep a secret? Sure. Okay. When we go to see this doctor tomorrow, the, the doctor. What's his name? Dr. Smith, Dr. Herschel Smith. Yeah. When we go to see Dr. Smith tomorrow, let's not tell him about Dambug, okay? <laughs> can we can we just forget about Dambug? I think Dr. Smith already knows about Dan Bug. He talked with the people at the clinic in Tulsa. They sent him your medical records. That's how come he agreed to see you. I already told you that, honey. I told you that before we left home. <laughs> Gee, Danny, it's so dark in here. It's so hot. And and it's raining. And there isn't any moon. It's kind of beautiful, though, the dark. Don't you think, Danny? I could get used to this. That's spooky. Spooky? The phone. It rang once, then it quit. Maybe it was a signal. What kind of signal? A message. Nobody knows we're here, Di. I mean, I didn't tell anybody what hotel we're staying in. Somebody 
rang the wrong room, that's all. Hello? Hello? Who is that? He asked for you. Hello? Yes, yes it is. Oh, thank you. Yes, it is dark in here. It's very, very dark in here. We have candles, though. Mm-hmm. No, I, I never have. I'm sure it's not. Yes, yes, Daddy went out and got us some Chinese food. You're very kind. <laughs> yes. Well, I hope so. Yes, thank you, we will. Bye. Who was it? Dr. Smith. He was very sweet. The clinic must have told him where we were staying. Well, what'd he say? Oh, he... He just wanted to make sure we were okay during the blackout. He, he just wanted to make sure we were comfortable and... Had food. That must have been him the first time, too. The line was messed up. I could hear someone talking, but uh, the connection was bad. <laughs> Full of static. He just wanted to assure me, he said, that he was looking forward to our visit tomorrow. He has a nice voice, Danny. He has a good voice. I'm glad. I couldn't live without you, Danny. I, I really couldn't. Jesus, Dad. You're burning up. I didn't tell you everything about the fawns. The fawns? You know the five fawns. What about them, honey? They have names. Did you name them? Of course I did, Danny. Don't pretend you don't know. I didn't pretend. I, what did you call them?
thumb, index, middle, third, and pinky. Pinky's my favorite. Dan Bug drowned, didn't he? Yes, honey, he did. Do you recall how it happened? You and me was in an intimate way down on the shore of Lake Osage. We thought the boy was asleep, but he got up went into the water without making any sound we could hear. By the time we found him, he was gone. It was a long time ago. Two years. Not so long. Good thing that you can talk about it though, Di. If you couldn't, I'd probably lose you all together. Me and the five bones. Yeah. Them also. That night I was in the Cherokee. The night Rinky Dink was killed. Bonnie said something. What'd she say? Oh, she was drunk, I guess. But I heard her say to Peggy Worth how it was. Uh, some people just don't deserve to have kids. And you figured she was mean you. Mm-hmm. I didn't take it to heart right away. Then after it turned out I couldn't get pregnant again, I started in on it meaning something. There was no way I could get it out of my head. It, it just stuck in my brain like a knife. It got so bad, I asked him about the Tulsa Clinic. Could they just do an operation, get that knife out of there? It ain't been easy on me neither, Ty. You drifting in and out. Though, I suppose, it'd give me a purpose in life since the accident. Keeping you from getting away from yourself altogether. I have to admit, I've been feeling a little desperate as of late. It's a damn hard thing to take feeling useless. You don't have a useless bone in your body, Danny. I'll tell everyone we know. If it weren't so damn hot, I'd kiss you. Kiss me anyway. Look at that, Ty. 
Whole city's lit up. Danny! Symmetrical.